folks, it's Frank here and uh, topics today is are we under the Ten Commandments? Are Christians under the Ten Commandments and is the Ten Commandments relevant today? The answer is a yes and a no or no and a yes. Both. <laughs> now, the reason why I bring that up is because the Ten Commandments are written on the two stone of tablets as we know by the finger of God and some hold that they are eternally binding upon God's servants and the question we want to find out is what does God's word say on, on that subject we know that some um, still observe the Sabbath and tithing and other requirements in law that they uh, put upon uh, as a you know to their parishioners or to their members of their church so it can be a uh, it's, it's an interesting topic just in that instance itself but for me personally I'm, I'm sort of wanting to bring this up now because I don't want to go into detail in my next talk on this subject I just want to make a brief reference to it so first let's answer that question scripturally interesting what um, who was it Martin Martin Luther said about the Ten Commandments he said the Ten Commandments do not apply to us Gentiles and Christians but only to the Jews if a preacher wishes to force you back to Moses ask him if you were brought by Moses out of Egypt and of course John, John Calvin felt the same way but what does the Bible teach on the subject and that's really the crux of what we want to get to. What does the Bible say? And so, and it's an important subject, I believe, even though we might have an answer immediately because we live in an age of grace. And what I see today, and maybe you see too, there's, there's this mixture of grace and law in corporate religion today. So let's, uh, let's sort of uh, get to this point. The Ten Commandments itself... The expression Ten Commandments is not found in the Bible. The Septic Inversion has termed it this way, Veka Loyi, Veka Loyi, Veka meaning ten and Loyi meaning words. And that's where we get the term Decalogue or Ten Commandments. Jesus, we know, was born under the uh, nation of Israel and he said that he didn't come to abolish the law or destroy the law, but to fulfill it. So just by that expression itself tells you he, the law hasn't gone anywhere. It's still relevant. But he, he didn't come to abolish it, just to fulfill it. Being a Jew, that was part of his... Uh, he had to you know, live, live, as a, live his life through with those laws in mind. The Apostle Paul wrote that the law has a shadow or was a shadow of good things to come. You know, back in the first century, like when we think about our reading of the book of Galatians and other, chap uh, other Bible passages, we find that many Hebrew converts to Christianity were still living under the law. And we know in Acts chapter 15, 1, they try to um, insist that circumcision was very important to one's salvation. I think they said to those that in Ephesus or Antioch, who Paul had uh, preached the gospel grace, to, uh, the grace, uh, the gospel of grace to them. They came down and said, "Hang on, Jesus is great. You believe that? Believe in Jesus, that gospel message. But you need to be circumcised to be saved." So they wanted to add something to the gospel. So what we want to do is uh, find out what is the right viewpoint of the law not just the ten commandments but the whole thing we're going to have a look at a couple of passages in galatians and colossians and i think that will will do it really you could look in romans as well but let's have a look at galatians chapter 2 galatians 2 15 and 16 it says we who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law but by faith in Jesus Christ even we have believed in Christ Jesus that we might be justified by faith in Christ 
and not by works of the law. For by works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. So there's no justification by the law. It's only by faith in Jesus Christ. And now he says also in chapter 3, 10 to 13, for as many are the works of the law are under the curse. So he says the law is the curse. Cursed is everyone who does not con continue in all the things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident by this. For the just shall live by faith. Yet the law is not of faith, but the man who does them shall live by them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. So indeed a righteous standing with God did not depend on a perfect obedience to the Mosaic law, for in the imperfect human state that was impossible. So then notice what um, Paul goes on to say, or yeah, Paul goes on to say that they were no longer under the curse of the law, and neither were any Christians obligated to observe the, all the commandments given to Israel. And this is stated in Colossians to the Colossians in Colossians chapter two, verses thirteen and fourteen. So if we go to Colossians chapter two. verses 13 and 14 it says and you being dead in your trespasses and under circumcision of your flesh he has made alive together with him having forgiveness forgiven you all trespasses isn't that interesting forgiven you all trespasses having wiped out the handwritten of requirements that was against us wiped it right out which was contrary to us he has taken it out of the way and nailed it to the cross his death nailed that law for ongoing believers for the new testament new covenant believers so doubt no doubt many believers in the first century had to adjust their viewpoint about the law and about um, recognize that they were free from it according to romans 7 6 they had to put their belief of uh, in Christ Jesus and he and believe that he brought the 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 law to its end and paved way for the inauguration of the new covenant and so that's why in Romans chapter 10 in verse 4 and Romans 6 14 he says you are not under law and Christ is the end of the law but we know all scriptures in spite of God. And now that, that answers that question, right? Scripturally, we're not under the law, not under the Ten Commandments. Now, what, what's interesting about the, the Ten Commandments, how it's relevant to us today, um, this is something that um, I find interesting. I mean, when we think about Adam and Eve, now I'm not saying this is correct. This is just a possibly a, just a personal view. What, what did God give them? Like, as a New Testament believer, and when we're born again, we get the laws written on our hearts and minds. It seems to be, why the, the Ten Commandments was important, it seems to me that it's possible that these commandments were written on their hearts and in their minds. I'm just saying, it could be, the Ten Commandments, because after they fallen, after they failed, and they'd fallen and sin entered into the world, those that moral code seems to be the problems that have plagued mankind morally speaking and so by god giving moses those ten commandments he's giving us um, a look into his mind isn't he besides the other laws but these are his finger this is his writing as it were <coughs> and so it's interesting, like when he gave the Ten Commandments, one of the, the uh, commandments he gave was this. I mean, and it has benefited society. That's why it's relevant today. I mean, the court system is based on the Ten Commandments. Uh, the, the government, especially um, republic governments, uh, the uh, Magna Carta and the uh, English law, the Commonwealth is based on the Ten Commandments. The principles derived from that uh, in law cases, uh, socialism um, coming from the governments, 
And so we have this um, um, uh, we have this in play today. In fact, here's a quote from a court case in 1983. Uh, it said the Ten Commandments had had have had an immeasurable effect on the Anglo-American legal development. Crockett versus Sorensen, 1983, and Stone versus Graham in 1980. The U.S. Supreme Court said. It is equal, equal, equally undeniable that the Ten Commandments have had significant impact on the development of secular legal codes of the Western world. Okay, so we see, it doesn't matter if you're an atheist, uh, believer, or unbeliever, whatever, it has an effect still today. So even though we are not under that law, because we're under the New Covenant, yet it still governs our lives today. You see how it's relevant? So, yes, it isn't. And yes, it is. <laughs> we are not under it. But strangely enough, the principles derived from it, especially in Western societies, we are living under it. Isn't that ironic? Uh, it's just, you know, it's just what, what it is, what you think it, what, what, how I see. But isn't that funny? And we know that all scripture is inspired by God. And so the Ten Commandments are holy. And so they're still having a role today. <clears throat> Interestingly, um, in one of the commands to the uh, nation of Israel was to instruct their children. And I'm trying to find the text where it said prior to instructing the children, they were to... Oh, here it is. In... So the parents were obligated to teach their children about God, the the statues and all that, the laws. But in in Deuteronomy chapter 5, it says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. slavery." So this is very interesting, right? Right? Because what sometimes we fail to appreciate, or maybe we haven't thought of, is that um, salvation by grace always preceded the giving of a law, or the law, or a covenant. Like what he's just said there in Deuteronomy 5, 6. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. Now... The law wasn't given to them then, but they were saved prior to them receiving the law. Do you see it? And this is very similar with the gospel of grace. You see, it's not... So they were saved, brought out of Egypt, and then they were given the commandments. And then they came into a covenant through Moses as a mediator. What's well, likewise with us today. You know, we are saved. We have done nothing for it. God has done all the work. Him and Christ. We are beneficiaries of it. We believe in Jesus and what he's done. And then what happens? We get the new birth. We get the uh, a new heart. The law is written on my heart and our mind. And do you see how that works? It's very similar. So it's very the same. Salvation, grace um, let me say it again. <clears throat> Salvation by His grace always precedes the giving of the law. And that's a beautiful thing. Jesus said in John 8, 31, 32, He said to the Jews who believed Him, If you abide in My word, you are truly My disciples. And if you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So freedom from slavery of sin, um, from God, from Jesus Christ, our Lord remains the re- continuing power in the Christian life today. And as, if you like, you could say it was a flowing from this uh, moral law that was given way back then. And it's still in play today. So, <laughs> yes, it's relevant. Um, even though we are not under it as believers, yet we're still living under it, ironically, uh, by the system that we're in. So the, go- the law hasn't been destroyed. 
It's interesting. It's still in play. Now, this may come up in a future topic about the Jews getting a second shot at salvation or coming into a, the new covenant. But that's another topic. I don't want to go sidetracking here. <laughs> but look forward to my next talk. It's going to be uh, building. I'm building on to from this talk to that one. And I just like to have just gotten this out of the way. So anyway, have a good day. And hopefully that's, uh, I think that was a pretty straightforward topic. I think it, most people would agree, except for those who are still applying the law to themselves via an organization, or maybe it's personally, I don't know. But either way, scripturally, what the Bible says, we are not under the Ten Commandments or any of the commandments, that is the 613 total laws that was given to the nation of Israel. We're under the new covenant of grace. Talk to you next week. See you guys.